right. Uh, welcome everyone back. Um, so remember last week we, we started the last section of the book talking about um, the heaven that we can that we can create here on earth. Um, the first section was talking about how we, how we make choices in our life, whether we bring in the good or bring in the bad. And, and those choices affect uh, uh, our realities. And also talking a little bit about, about what are the greatest things in life? Are the greatest things money or are the greatest things love? So I'm gonna go into this, this last section, um, which is the last series of seven. Um, it's this um, seven visions of heaven on earth. So I will share my screen here. Um, here we go. Now the seven visions of Jesus's community, which is heaven here on earth. This last section of the revelation describes the wondrous glory of what could be if we create heaven on earth by creating the type of community that God has guided us toward. Jesus's community is a state of being that we can choose to live in. The glorious beauty of, G of God's heavenly community is the beauty in the people and the beauty in the relationships we nurture. We try to build up riches for God, but we are the riches God wants. Following God's way is meant to bring the greatest joy and fulfillment to our lives. When goodness and mercy flow from us in the way we live our lives, we will know what it feels like to be with God. Heaven is a place where everyone feels loved. No one feels alone. Everyone feels wanted. Everyone feels beautiful. Everyone feels worthy. Everyone is cherished for everything that makes them unique. Heaven is a place where people care for one another and help each other out. People care about one another and look out for one another. People stand up for one another. Heaven is a place where no one fights or cheats you or lies to you or uses you. Heaven is a, is a place where everyone's needs are met. The poor and the vulnerable are protected. Everyone is treated with equity. Heaven is a place where people receive justice, mercy, compassion, and grace. Heaven is a place where all people are respected for their divine worth. Everyone is treated with dignity, and we cherish the beauty in all of our differences. So the first vision of what heaven uh, is like, this vision sees the benefits of being in community with one another. The beauty of heaven goes so far beyond physical beauty. God asks us all to join together as one family and share in God's family traditions of equality, dignity, respect, and love for all people. We can create in our hearts this heaven that is filled with greater splendor than anything we have ever imagined. The true glory of God has greater radiance than all earthly jewels combined. The beauty of God's glory is seen in love, compassion, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. The beauty in God's glory is seen in creativity, care, kindness, joy, peace, and comfort. The beauty in God's glory is seen in truth, understanding, respect, dignity, and connectedness. Jesus' community is immense in size, covering all of creation, and everyone is included. Let us explore the new possibilities for relating to one another. So my questions here are, can you describe the beauty of love or how is compassion beautiful? Have you had situations that, that not talking physically beautiful, but beautiful emotionally, beautiful, um, just have a, a, a wondrous impact on your life. Can you describe some of those situations? Um, yeah, um, this may sound unusual, but we just had a solar eclipse. I was watching it live on YouTube as the shadow moved over, I guess, the sun or the or moon. I, I, I wasn't <laughs> sure, okay? But it, it became total darkness. And then you could see the corona. And as this was happening live, as soon as the corona appeared, 
I burst into tears. I felt like Jodie Foster in contact. No words. Because here I am standing on Earth watching this solar eclipse in real time. And it was just, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I like the last couple of things you read. And uh, what is it? Let us explore new possibilities for relating to one another. Mm -hmm. Somebody used the term relational field. And I'm sure all of you believe in energy. And as we get together with another individual, their energy and our energy, my energy, or our energy begin to blend and it becomes something greater than the individual. So it can become sometimes a, uh, an umbrella for protection. It can be c- become a, a container to, to kind of boil and kind of off impurities or to, or to mature, you know, it becomes a place to hold energies. But I love this term relational field because I've experienced it. When I meet somebody who's open-hearted and I'm grounded and open-hearted, I feel their emotions. Mm -hmm. And so um, without words, I can, if they're sad, I feel their sadness. If, If I feel silly and they're sensitive to me, they feel silly. And at that moment, this goes back to last week, all time stops. And for that moment, it is heaven on earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a beauty that's, that's, you can't, it's not a physical beauty, but it's still beautiful. But like for the, for the, 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 the painters and the artists in the group, if you were going to paint the feeling of love and relationship and mm-hmm. compassion, what would that look like? Or if you were going to paint it with words, what, what, what are the words that really describe what that feels like? For me, it's losing the bad vibes around me. Mm-hmm. And it's calming. And when I'm painting or drawing, I'm invested in that time. Mm-hmm. And the time out there that the walls are be, have been put up, it, I, don't, I don't feel it. It's gone. It just takes all that stuff mm-hmm. away. I don't know about what's going on around me. I'm just intense and in what was happening mm-hmm. right there. So I want you to think about what it feels like to be loved, to feel like you're not alone, to feel like you're wanted, or when somebody finds you beautiful? What does it feel like when somebody finds you worthy? Or when your unique self is cherished? And is there anything in the world that feels better than that? Ed? One thing I've noticed in, in a lot of my work is that a lot of people really want to be seen exactly as they are. And not just as, like, it's easy to see someone through our own lens, but to see them as they are, not how I want them to be. Mm. And I notice that when I am able to do that, and when others have done that for me, there's a deep sense of connection. And there's a feeling of love, even if that person is different or has different views, but they can be respected, they can be loved, they can be uh, um, cherished. And then something happens to them and what they're giving changes too. Mm -hmm. Love multiplies itself, whether it's romantic love or just respect and dignity and, and, and concern, that kind of love multiplies grows you were speaking of expressing uh love and compassion in art Mm -hmm. and uh music of course is one of the arts Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for me, I like to express love and compassion musically by playing very gentle melodies mm -hmm. with unique chordal combinations mm -hmm. uh, and nothing like the, uh, uh, the harsh, uh, loud, but soft and very gentle mm -hmm. expresses love and compassion to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have something, Patricia. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think about my songwriting and most of the songs that are kind of airy and feel really peaceful and honest have been love songs. Um, and, um, you know, a, a song I got an award for is called When I'm in Love. And it's, the lyrics are so simple, but the message is, you know, when I'm in love, I wanna give my all, I wanna give my heart and soul, you know, and, uh, and find all the warm and tender words to surround you so you'll never feel cold. And, you know, it's just like, I don't know, it's, it's something that comes. Um, I did have a person in mind, but, you know, the thing is, it it's just feels so good to express yourself mm -hmm. and to be yourself and to be soft and vulnerable, whether it goes your way or not. <laughs> So that's enough for me. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm. yes, I'll, I'll also, uh, uh, in my songwriting too, when it's at its best, like if I try, if I'm trying, well, let's see, I need to do, put this in. But no, but when I really am inspired, the song, music, and lyrics write themselves and mm -hmm. that expression of beauty comes from this connection and it's um i i could put it into words in the song but, <laughs> but i can't describe it that's why it takes me i have to write it i can't just talk about it because it just it's it, it, it's indescribable actually mm -hmm. Yeah. So th this passage that I, that I used here is actually uh, talking about physical beauty and jewels, which, which I think the jewels can remind you of love. They can feel like love. Um, whether you know whatever any kind of art, it 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 can be hard to put this into words. It's hard to see it. You, you can't really see it scientifically and pick it apart. What is love and what it, what does that feel like? But but through art, whether it's whether it's um, painting or or uh, jewel work or or songwriting or or playing songs, you you can feel it, and you can share that mm -hmm. feeling um, in better ways than you can sometimes with words. John, uh, I was told uh, with some of the South American tribes that were before they were uh, influenced by other cultures that some of the cultures almost had a telepathy, and um, what one individual experienced, everyone understood the experience. And I know when I do photography or when I do poetry and I'm motivated by, uh, or but I'm motivated and I have passion about love, maybe loss or even longing, you know, any of those. Um, I'm able, it, it, it's hard work, but I'm able to, bring words to a poem that expresses the emotion. Mm -hmm. So when I think of, and I do understand what it's like to um, be with someone and understand what they're feeling. And even though the words have not ex been expressed, we, you know, we're always, you know, by body language, by energy, by eyes, by, by everything that's happening, by the en yeah. again, that energetic uh field relationship. Uh, we are really uh, seeing each other. And sometimes in really good ways, we can be very healthy mirrors for each other. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yes. Yeah. Anyone 
Anyone else? Go on to the next section. Um, the next section there is um, is is um, valuing equality in in diversity. So this vision sees how each one of us in Jesus's community is beautifully different, yet you are yet we are all equal to one another. The gates of heaven are open and they never shut. Everyone has equal access to enter and no one can keep you out. In heaven, everyone is measured to have equal worth. No one is even slightly higher or better than anyone else. Yet everyone is uniquely adorned, uniquely beautiful. The unique features of each of our bodies make us uniquely beautiful in the eyes of God. But the unique features of our souls are even more beautiful yet. Every person has unique gifts, unique talents, a unique perspective, and a unique spirit. And every spirit is equally beautiful in their own special splendor. Only when all people come together can we see the full beauty and splendor of heaven here on earth. We were all made in God's image, so you can't see the image of God until you see God in everyone. The relationship we all share is the image of God in which we were created. So Revelation 21, uh, 15 through 20, um, it it's talking about measuring the community to be perfectly equal on all sides, which each, and, and in this passage, each foundation is represented by a different precious jewel. And I'm, I see the, so as, you know, each different group of people around the world being represented by a different precious jewel. And if each jewel is unique, how does the full mosaic change if one of them is left out? And how can many different precious jewels all be equal? So if you have a piece of art that has, you know, all kinds of unique stones and every stone is different, how does that art change if you remove one of them and you, all of its uniqueness and whatever it was is gone, is not in the picture. How does it change the picture? That's kind of metaphorical, but. Feels incomplete. Mm -hmm. Like we're missing something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when you say that, I think like, like if each atom is in relationship to another atom, mm -hmm. uh, that what happens is if one atom moves, everything is shifted. Mm -hmm. yeah. So everything influences everything. Mm -hmm. Consider the color spectrum, red, blue, mm -hmm. and yellow. You take away, they're all equal, but if you take one of them away, whatever you're looking at appears totally different. Mm -hmm. Right. And they're all different, but none of them is better than the other. They're just all different and unique in their own way. And that's how I see that God sees us, that God sees people, that we're all different. We're all beautiful. We're all, we're all beautiful differently, but equally. And without any one of us, we're missing the whole picture. It says in the Bible, get, that, go ahead. We, we end up getting disconnected when that mm -hmm. is pulled away. Yeah, it says, it says in the Bible that we were made in God's image, but if we were all made in God's image, the only way to see the image of God is to see God in all of us. Yeah. That's the full image. So what have you seen in another person that's a lot different than you, but you found it really beautiful? What? Ed, go ahead. You know, sometimes when someone speaks a language that I don't speak and I don't understand what they're saying, sometimes just the sounds or 
or the gestures of those language. Because I was listening recently to to people speaking uh, Tagalog from uh, the Philippines and and uh, and other languages too that I don't speak. I don't I don't speak a word of it. I I I I don't know any. But there's just something very beautiful when I'm watching people and they're interacting with their family members or sometimes they were uh, uh, they were singing karaoke, but they only could sing it in their in their native language, different songs. And it was just there was something so beautiful about that. just watching someone just so proud to be themselves and and being their goofy, imperfect. Bit, but it was just it was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You're going to laugh, but I find beauty in the different food cultures of the world and the way different people prepare their food. The Asian food is unique and and equal to the Mexican food, which is unique but delicious, which is equal to uh, any other food group that you can think of. But they're all different, but they're all equal, but they're all delicious. So, mm -hmm. and the and the people who prepare them the same way. I like what Paul said. It's in, uh, in beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and uh, some people can't stand still for a minute because of their, you know, our own anxieties. Um, I like when people are different because I I'm always learning new perspectives, and then I think maybe I can try something different because when something flows from someone. I have an admiration for them and I see it's, it's something that is integrated inside of them. So there, there's a comfort and I, and, and so it's like, I'll, I'll pretend to do what they do uh, like a young child, even though I'm almost 70 years old, but I will like to mimic people because again, a brand new door opens that I couldn't even have conceived of before. Yeah. Yeah, and similar to that, like um, I like the uh, music of different cultures, and uh, and they're all unique and all yet, and especially with music, it's a universal language, and I could appreciate it. That I love, uh, you know, the Celtic stuff and. Um, you know, some of the uh, Latin things and the um, Aboriginal and uh, different African tribe. I mean, the, uh, and the Native American, uh, it's just like, I'm just fascinated by uh, all of that and Middle Eastern uh, things and the similarities in sometimes that, wait, is this Chinese or <laughs> Scottish? Yeah, they use the pentatonic, both use the pentatonic scales. Um, and there was some Middle Eastern uh, and um, and Celtic things that are, you know, and it's really very interesting that even in the differences, that there's something there. And it's like, it's, it's just fascinating. Mm -hmm. We're all different and yet we're all the same. And yet we're all different. And yet we're all the same. Yes. And how beautiful that is. Mm -hmm. I noticed a lot of things that we're mentioning here, music or language or food, are the same things that define uh, cultures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there are so many people that, that, that are trying to, you know, say their culture is the best and it's the right one and everyone should, should you know, adapt to, to, the, to their culture and we should, you know, make it the dominant culture around the world or whatever. And I like my culture. I don't necessarily want to change my culture to someone else's, but I, I like seeing other people's cultures. I like when, when I can get immersed in it and, and like John, I'll, I'll mimic it or try to try to take part. And I enjoy that. And it's new and it's, it's opening new doors. And it, a lot of times there are parts of it that I want to take and add to my culture. 
you know, and add to, to, to my experiences because it's something I never thought of before. And, and I think my life is richer and fuller when I, when I add some things from different places where, you know, from, from, from people who aren't like me and, and add some of their culture into my life. I, I, my life gets richer every time I do that. Yeah, and, and actually the, even deeper is, you know, the you know, spirituality, the different paths that mm -hmm. different cultures take. And, um, you know, religions are specific for that group at that time and whatever. And almost all spiritualities have underneath it the, the mystic connections. Mm -hmm. And the mystics, no matter where they're from, all kind of speak the same language, um, which underlies what the best of religions are supposed to be doing, which often they get hung up in their own little, well, this, this, is, this is the dogma, and this is what we have to do, and every, you know, this has to be for everybody. No, no, no. God is too big for any of that, and that's why I love that little meme that's going around. God is not... It's not Christian or Jewish or Buddhist or, or Islamic or, you know, or Hindu or uh, God is none of that. God is beyond all of these religions. And these religions just point the way. And you may have one that will lead you, you feel, suits you better than another. But none of them are the only way. And... Each person, as unique as they are, have you know, uh, have different things that would, would suit them. And I loved, I, I call myself, which I've learned from uh, uh, a nearby star, an interspiritualist. Who uh, yeah, she's, I'm, I'm Jewish from atheistic parents who studies Islam and you know, and, and every single <laughs> iteration of religion that there is. I should just find some beauty in each of them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I strive to do. Yeah. Paul, you're muted. In music and in cooking, uh, as an example, the elements are all the same. Salt is salt, pepper is pepper, uh, vet, uh, spinach is spinach, corn is corn. Music, the notes are different, but the amount and the volume of the notes and the way in which they're put together, and in foods, the amount of the spices and the way in which they're put together create mm -hmm. intricately different dishes, and in music, intricately different sounds, which makes them so totally unique and different. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why you have salsa and music and food. <laughs> <laughs> so we go on to the next section here. That Jesus' community is in our hearts. This vision sees a community that is always open to everyone, everywhere, who chooses to be part of it. It is the state of our hearts. It, it is the state of our hearts when we fill our hearts with the love of God. The beauty of a church is not in the building or the artifacts inside. The, although they can also be beautiful, but the, the, the main beauty of a church is the beauty in the people who make up the church and the beauty in the relationships they nurture through the church. We try to build up riches for God, but we are the riches God wants. True beauty is not in things, True beauty is in hearts. Jesus's community is a state of being that each of us can choose or not. No one can kick us out and no one is the gatekeeper to let us in. Nothing can keep us from it because we generate it. When we are following God, we create a light that brightens all the earth. We can show other people the way by following the way ourselves. So Tom, do you have your Bible with you? Yes. Can you read Revelation 21, 22? 1, 2, 22. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Keep so going. For, no, no, that's, that's enough. 
when I'm talking about, the, you know, this is this is the, the vision that John is painting of, 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 you know, heaven coming down onto earth and becoming heaven on earth. And there's no temple in it. And it, this seems odd a little bit for a religious book to have, you know, that the true heaven has no temple in it. Um, but I believe what it's saying that is that a physical temple isn't necessary because God and Jesus are the temple. Um, so my question is, what makes a temple or a church? What makes something a religious a religious place to be? And then how can our re church reflect that temple that is God? So what, what makes a temple? What, what's a temple and what's not? What, what is God's dwelling place? Well, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, we say occasionally is at the end of service, you have not been to church, you are the church. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's what it, it's the people, it's the congregation and, and the, whoever is assembled. And um, what makes it, and it's, you know, it's what's in our hearts. So you, you mentioned a couple of times, you know, the state of the heart. And, uh, I, I, and I couldn't help say, you know, the state of the art is the state of the heart. <laughs> and, yes. and, and that's that's it. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big things that's made church feel like church to me, and not like any other meeting, like a like a meeting for work or something is that sense of fellowship that sense of camaraderie mm. i think church i think that's why we just always seem to have like a coffee time after church and that's one of the things that we've been missing when you go to zoom church is over boom and the things the recordings and we're gone mm -hmm. and yet i'm still where i am but when I'm at church in person and we're having a cup of coffee together or a treat or something, and then next thing I know, Terry's making his homemade pies and bringing them to church. And then people are sharing more about what's going on in their lives or different things. And it becomes something very special. And sometimes that happens, like in this group, I find that happens. And I found too that that people are really sharing about who they are. And that to me feels like church. So if we just have the official ceremony, but none of that fellowship after something feels, it feels like when you said earlier, the mosaic, but the piece of art is missing. Mm -hmm. If we don't have that fellowship part that it's missing. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the pastor telling us what to think, but people are talking about their thoughts and ideas about what Reverend Pat just presented. <laughs> And it's just so beautiful to be a part of that. John? Um, I love it when you said there is no temple. Uh, just as, I mean, we have bodies, but we are not our body. Uh, you know, we get caught up in adoring or being fearful of objects, but they're just objects. They're not, they're just things. Uh, a couple people have said it in different ways. Um, when I feel the spirit of something or the essence of it, I mean, watching this solar eclipse, it's like, it was fucking, fucking bigger than me. Uh, <clears throat> and so, um, all the things for me, like spirit and essence, have great meaning. And they're the things that I want to live for, to cultivate, to experience, and to feel the essence and, and spirit of others. Um, then it feels like then we are in a temple. You know, it could be uh, one individual, again, meeting another individual and having a sacred moment. Mm -hmm. And that, and that for me is, um, that's everything. Right. It's, it's God, it's everything. Mm -hmm. And hopefully a church will foster that. Yeah, I don't think this church saying there is no temple is saying there's no use for church. Uh, to me, what it's saying is that the, 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 the goal is not the building. 
even though we have a beautiful church and I think that the beautiful artifacts in our church helped to set the mood, they helped to make it warm and inviting and beautiful. Um, that's not the, that's not the end. That, that, that's not the, the, you know, this is for this building. This is the, the, the building is, is, the, is how we worship. But I, I think the, the, the true part that makes our church a temple for me is how our church fosters community and how it fosters relationship and how it fosters love between one another. And that builds the true temple, which is in all of us. So like, you know, we are the church. The church isn't the building. There is a building where the church meets, but we are the church. And that's the beautiful part. Ed? You know, you just reminded me of this beautiful moment. I'm going to go back to you and me and Reverend Pat hanging out on Sunday that I was talking about earlier. And it was one of the persons came by because, you know, the pantry's open after the, the uh, service in the afternoon. And someone came by and that person shared deeply with Reverend Pat. We didn't know what they're talking about. They're off outside. But you said to me, Patricia, Reverend Pat knows them by name because she talks to them. She's talking and that the fellowship was not just amongst us and us versus those people out there but reaching out into the community. And I think a true temple is one that's open, not just to its private members, but is open to sharing its good, if pantry or what have you. And knowing them by name, that they're not just numbers. Of, I, I'll never forget when Reverend Pat said, yeah, with the homeless issue, we just didn't want to pass them on down the street and get, get out of my hair. You're someone else's problem now. She really wanted to help them find whatever they needed in the services. And that to me felt like community that made me proud. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I think that's a part of what a temple is, is, and also I'll never forget when, when a group that Adrian and, and, and others, uh, Lane and a group went to Puerto Rico, and they weren't just sitting there complaining about, oh, whatever the government does or doesn't do. Well, we're going to do it. We're going to, we're the church. We, it's us. Um, uh, we're the ones that do it. And I think that that's a part of the temple is that it has an outreach too. Yeah, I think uh, church at its best, and I think we do, uh, we do pretty well with that, is that we are, I like to call it, one of the, one of the uh, other ways of looking at the kingdom of, of heaven, the a companionship of empowerment, that we are companions empowering each other. And when one of us falls and is weak, the other, and then we all take terms of like being there and, and not fixing or something, no, but just really getting each other and being there with the love and support and prayers to again, empower each other. And, and that's, that's the beauty. And I think we come pretty close to, to doing that. Yeah. So the next section here, next chapter, uh, the, the fourth vision. This vision sees how God's message is meant to transform and heal our lives. Worship of God is not an aside from life. God's message is meant to bring the greatest joy and fulfillment to our lives if we choose to follow it. When goodness and mercy flow from us in the way that we live our lives, we will know what it feels like to be with God. Heaven can be in our lives when our lives slow from God. Heaven can be in our lives when we live according to the salvation and healing that Jesus offered us. This community of heaven on earth is the refreshing spring that is the source of a true full life. It is the source of life, the river of life, that feeds the trees of life, that nurture and heal us continuously. So let the love of God flow through your life to nurture and heal your life. Tom, can you read Revelation 22, 1 through 2? You muted, Tom. Oh, 
Oops, sorry about that. Okay, that's the river of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Mm -hmm. So this is beautiful stuff in Revelation as well. This, this, this part of this book is talking about the, the beauty of what, what could be. And here, when it's talking about the, 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 the heaven on earth is the river of life. It is the water that feeds it. It is the trees that grow and bear fruit. It is our life. And all too often, I see people who feel like they go to the church on Sunday, and that's their worship, and they're done. And it hasn't affected and changed their life. And to me, what the true value of the church is, is how it changes your life and how you live your life day to day, hour to hour, uh, throughout your whole life. I think that's where, where the, the real beauty lies. I think that's where the real transformation lies, not in the worship and singing praise. And I, I love our Christmas carols. They're awesome. Um, but the Christmas carols, again, are supposed to inspire us to a different way to live. And, and I believe that the, the true worship is in how we live. It is, it is in how we spend every day of our lives. Um, so how do... I guess my question then is how do you, how do you find that worshiping God brings a different meaning to your life, or that how your Christian faith um, brings brings about a, a different a different way that you live your life, or a different meaning to your life? So I've found when, when I look for those opportunities to be of service, so all the, you know, whether I'm at work, whether I'm socializing with people, when I look for what are people in need of and how can I help? And I let that be one of the driving factors of my life. And one of, one of, one of the main aspects of, of my goals in life. And every time I do that, every time I find something that there's a need I can address, it makes me happy. It makes me joyous. It is a blessing to be, I could do something for someone. The, the feeling is, is, is wonderful. And, and those opportunities to actually live out what, what God has taught us, those in, in our lives, to me, that's... Where the blessing is that's where the value is that's where my worship is is in in how i treat other people um john the stronger i feel my connection to god the stronger i feel a connection to everything I mean, the, uh, what I mean is um, there's no separation between I and thou. And thou might be a tree even, not just people, but anything living. Um, I also like to do random acts of kindness. I, I mean, I love that statement. And it may be very simple, again, opening a door or saying something kind and... Um, after you know that, that brief connection, I walk away and I have a smile on my face. And again, I'm treating others as I wish to be treated with kindness. Hmm. I think 
if it doesn't make me a better person, then what am I doing it for? I think it's got to be more than just, oh, I do this because this is the thing I do on Sundays or, or Wednesday nights or Tuesday or whenever it is. But if it's just something I do because I've always done it that way, then it's kind of meaningless and it's just kind of empty. So it's got to have, and this is something Jesus often taught about. And also I'd say that most of the great spiritual masters have, by the way, is that it's not just in what you say, but it's what you do and it's your attitude and how, not just even that you do it, but how you do it, the attitude. And so if you approach something with, as John just said, kindness or that loving, if it's, if I can't get out of my grumbly, grumpy, grumpy pants self, and if I'm just going to be that same grumpy person or whatever that ego self would have me, 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 or whatever it is, if I can't be better than that, then it's, it's, it, it transforms into something better. And all of a sudden I do want to hold the door open for someone because I'm happier inside. I know that God has filled me in the lungs with the Holy Spirit. And I just kind of sense what's needed in others before they, even if, even if no one said it out loud, I kind of know, oh, that person's hurting. Maybe, maybe just need to say hi to them or maybe just smile or just acknowledge them. And it could be that restaurant server that's overlooked, overworked that no one seems to care about or the cashier in the grocery store that no one says, hey, thank you, you have a good day too. Um, or just a simple kindness as I'm going about in the world somewhere. There's no, it makes me a better person, it makes me more conscious, more aware. Mm And, and if you're doing these, these acts of service or acts of love um, kind of as a chore, hoping to get a reward later, you know, a piece of candy or some money or, or a, 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 a golden palace in heaven, um, you miss the reward. The reward was there. It is the, the joy in being able to, to make someone smile, the joy in seeing someone's burden lighten, the joy in, in, in seeing someone comforted and and relaxed and finally feeling like they're safe that that joy is is the reward i just had a real life experience and what you're experience if what you're describing my cat just jumped up on me to tell me that her food bowl was empty <laughs> and she sat there very patiently waiting until i went to the bag and got a, a new supply of food to put in her bowl and then when I put the food was in the bowl, then she started eating. And you could just sense the love and affection that she was. I mean, she's not a human being, but she's definitely one of God's entities. Yep. And, and that was really neat. And the other thing that I, I get tremendous satisfaction from is I'll be listening maybe on TV and a St. Jude's commercial will come on. And that will remind me that I need to call them up and make a small donation. Now, it's not that... It's not that I'm making a huge difference, but I'm making a little difference. And if a whole bunch of people make a little difference, it becomes a huge difference. Yes, there, there, are, there are billion, seven billion, seven billion people on Earth. If seven billion people made made the world a little bit better, we'd be seven billion times better. So I'm going to end it there for tonight and then next week will be our last week and we'll finish up with the, the visions of heaven here on earth. <laughs>